Hey, uh, we're in this series right now that's all about the vision of Heart of the City Church. Now, if you've been around for a while, you might be like, hey, I've heard this before. Uh, many of you are new. Praise the Lord that we always have new people coming to the church. Salvation's happening every week and new people joining our family. And man, I, I know that out there, it's getting a little weird. And in here is the place for hope and for purpose and for identity and for salvation. And so, hey, you're in the right place. Um, I just want to let you know whether you've heard this before or not, that when we're talking about our vision as a church and our, our mission and what we, not only what we believe, but what we're doing, it's not because you're just supposed to have some mission statement that you put on a brochure and on a poster on the wall. It's because these things are actually what we believe and actually what we're giving our lives to. Like, I really believe this stuff. And so I'm, I'm, I'm here today to invite you, not just to listen and like, oh, that's what that church thinks, but it's an invitation for you as an individual and as a family for you to say, that's what I think as well, and that's what I want to be a part of. And so would you consider that? This is who we are. We are a people after God's own heart. We're striving to be a people after God's own heart. It's not about our action first, it's about our relationship first. It's about, it's about us being sons and daughters of the King and striving for that relationship first and foremost above all. Are you with me? Is that what you want too? You wanna, you wanna be in relationship with God in a real way. And so if you are and when you are, when the Spirit of God fills you, it leads you to, to do something. I just don't think that the Spirit of God can actually live inside the human soul and not provoke some sort of action. And so because we're chasing after God's heart and we desire God's heart and we know God's heart, we exist to do, we're pursuing these things. Now there's a million things, of course, that, that we could, and, and titles and ways that we can put it, but we're trying to gather as a community around some specific things that we think encapsulates the heart of God for his people. And so this is what we exist to do, to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. That's what we're doing as a community and we're inviting you to join us. <laughs> Will you say this with me? We exist to help people know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. It begins with knowing God, of course. We, we really can't do anything in this life if we don't actually know God. All of the action, all of the Bible studies, all of the service projects, all of anything, if we don't actually know him, we're totally missing it. You know that we're not just practicing religion here. We're building relationship with a living God here. And so when you know God, then you step into this journey of salvation and what that looks like. And, and, and it has to start with knowing God though. And so, and then we're, we want to help people find freedom. And so that's what I'm here today to, to speak with you about. My, my assignment today is to speak about the second uh, part of our vision, which is to find freedom. And so I just want to read just a couple passages, foundational passages from the scriptures. You probably heard a few of these just to set the framework for the direction that we're going today. So here's passage number one. Jesus here uh, is discussing this contrast between who he is and what he came to do and who the evil one is and basically what he works to do in this life. You know we're in a battle and Jesus says this, the thief comes to, the thief being the devil, the devil, devil and the powers of darkness. He says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If you didn't know it, that's what he's trying to do to you and your family. That's what he's working really hard right now to do in our nation. To steal, kill, and destroy through lies, through deceit, through chaos, right? This is what the devil comes to do is to steal, kill, and destroy. But, but Jesus came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Life and have life to the full. That's one of the things that Jesus came to bring us is life abundant. Now, this life abundant that he's offering you, it may not mean that you get a Lamborghini. Okay. Just be prepared. It may not, you may not get that. You may not get a mansion. You may, you may or you may not have an abundance of material possessions. This, this whole thing is not about us getting more stuff. Now, you may have material possessions, you, you may have a money, you may have a Lamborghini, but that's not the point. 
The point is that we live an abundant life because we have the greatest, most precious thing in all of the universe, something more precious than our mind can even imagine. We, we get the presence of the living God living in us. That's what the abundant life is. It's not just heaven when you die, it's experiencing God's kingdom here on this earth. And so, so like the Apostle Paul can say, I know what it is to have a lot and to have nothing. I know what it is to be well-fed and to be hungry. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation because I have Christ. In fact, I consider everything else to be gained in this life as trash compared to inheriting him. And so Jesus came to, to bring us abundant life. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says this, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh, we're thinking a lot about freedom these days, aren't we? Oh, well, our government's getting kind of weird right now. <laughs> it is. Land of the free, home of the brave, unless you do what we say. I just, personally, personally, I think that uh, uh, somebody filled with the spirit of God should be led by the Holy Spirit and reason but you should only put in your body what you feel the Holy Spirit tells you to put in your body. I'll just leave that right there. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying to do anything or not do anything. I'm just saying, listen to the Holy Spirit. And I think that you should have freedom in that. But let me just say this. No matter what governmental structure you are under, even if the government that you're under says, do whatever you want, you will never have real freedom unless you have the Spirit of God in you. This is what it's all about. This is not primarily about our political system. To experience real freedom in this life, we need the Spirit of God in us and leading us. Not just in us, but leading us. Last scripture, John 8, Jesus says this. He said to the Jews who had believed him. It's interesting to me that he's speaking to those that had already believed him. And he says this, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. There's something to not just believing in him, but abiding in him and abiding in his truth, his word, his reality, sticking in that, meditating on that, knowing that and, and letting that word take fruit, uh, take root and then grow fruit in your life. If you abide in my word, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So I'm here today to speak about finding freedom and this journey that we're on in finding freedom. And so I want to introduce to you the title today, Do You Want the Vehicle? Do You Want the Vehicle? I don't know if you, I don't know, if you uh, know this about me, but I've had a lot of different jobs uh, in my life. And ever since I really started following Jesus and graduated from college, I have always viewed myself in full-time ministry it's just for a lot of those years, I had to do a bunch of other jobs to make money. I actually think that that's what, what your calling in life is as well, is that you'd be doing full-time ministry as you're doing whatever you do to make money. I think that's everybody's job who follows Jesus. But, so I've had many different jobs in my life, and my last job, my last year before coming on staff here was right up here at Parker Toyota. Did you know that? I was a car salesman. Not all of them are sleazy. There's a lot of great people. In the car business, when you quit, you don't put in two weeks' notice. When you say or insinuate you're leaving, you leave immediately. That's just, I don't know, that's the way that it is. So I knew that, I had heard that, and so the day came when I was finally invited to come on staff here, and I was so blessed by that. And so I had learned so much, and at the time, Connor White's dad was the general manager up here, and so I wrote a paper and it was entitled, Why I'm a Better Pastor Having Spent a Year in the Car Business. <laughs> For real. And the day that I was going to quit, I walked into uh, Mike White's office, and I gave him the paper, and I said, I quit. <laughs> and he read it. And, you know, because really, like, as a car salesman, people immediately think that you're, like, going to lie to them, or you're trying to, like, lead them astray. And it's like, dude, you came here to buy a car. Like, I... And so it really did teach me to better, be a better pastor because, you know, we, we're living in a time right now where people think that, like, we're out to get them. And we're like, no, no, we just have the words of life for you. And, you know, just 
ever, everlasting joy in eternity. Like, I'm really here for you, you know? Like, <laughs> you don't have to, but this is the way that the world is looking at us right now. Like, we're, like we're crazy. And so, um, and so I spent a year selling cars, and um, I never got to sell this car, but I wish that I had. That's that Lamborghini that you may or may not have, you know, living the abundant life that Jesus offers you. Probably may not, but isn't this a good-looking car? I never have driven one before, but I wish I could have sold that one. Here's another car that's orange and has four tires. Uh, (laughs) Not not as cool, but, but good on gas mileage. So, like, so when you're a car, when you sell cars, you know, I, I, I like cars, but I don't like know anything about them. So they're like, go and study all the features and, you know, tell people about why they're so cool. And so I learned a lot about the Prius. And I was like, oh man, this car is actually pretty cool. Like it's got a gas engine and this electric engine. And when you brake, it actually recharges the batteries and da 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 and all this cool stuff they're learning. It has these little nubs on the side and it makes the air swivel a weird way. And it's like all this cool stuff. And, and so I would, you know, Try and sell people cars by telling them all the benefits and all the features. And, but, but how many of you know that if you get to the end of a test drive and the whole process, and I've just blabbered on for 45 minutes about all the features, if the person doesn't want the vehicle, they're not going to buy the vehicle. It doesn't matter how many features it has. If they don't want it, they're not going to take it. It doesn't matter if, I, if I'm fully convinced this is a good car for you. Don't buy the Lamborghini, buy the Prius. You, this is really going to fit better for your life. But tell them about, all about the features. If they don't want it, they're not going to take it. Yeah. And so here, here's, a, here's a car that I could, I could sell because I've actually owned. This is our, this is our truck. I, I have this truck. I've used this truck. I've experienced the features and the benefits of this truck and how it's really practical. And though I might like to drive the Lambo, this actually gets the job done. And so I... Uh, I want to ask you again, do you want the vehicle? So I'm going to be straight up with you today. Come out and say exactly what I'm, what I'm presenting to you today. I know the primary message of our vision is that we exist to help people find freedom. I'm not saying that what I'm presenting to you today is the only way to find freedom. The truth is there's many vehicles that we could use and that God has for us on our journey of working out our salvation, of finding freedom from sin, freedom from pain, freedom from addiction, freedom from broken relationships and, and, and living freely into all that God has called us to. There's many vehicles, but what I'm here to sell you today is a vehicle that I've actually owned, that I currently own, and that I have used the functions and the features of and I really believe in it. And so I'm going to present to you this vehicle, and I just simply want to ask you, do you want it? Here's the vehicle. Small groups. This is a vehicle that can take you on the journey of finding freedom, the fullness of life that Jesus has offered you. Jesus said, I came to bring you full life. This is a vehicle that I've owned, and so I'm gonna present to you five simple features of this vehicle, and at the end of this test drive, drive, I'm gonna ask you if you want it, okay? Here we go, number one, what can you expect to gain out of this vehicle? The first thing that you can expect out of a small group is friendships, and I will say it, even family. I know that you want to not just come here and sit in a seat on a weekend and, and not know anybody. I know that you desire something deeper, something more. You desire people that love you and that you love. You desire friendships because we are designed that way. And the truth is, I know that that many of us would like our friendships to become like family. And, And I can just tell you, I've experienced this. This is a vehicle that I own. The small group that I have right now, we do life together. We really do. We we are with each other in it, in the, in the good times and in the tough times, we're, we're talking about things that would never, ever be talked about in this room. We eat together and we celebrate together. We vacation together. We, we go to the beach together. We hang out together. And, and these, these are people that to, to us are, of course, we have family and we love our family, but these people are, are just as close as, as family. 
And I, I want that for you. And so if you're not experiencing that, then consider this vehicle that I'm offering to you, to you today because like, I don't, I don't remember if Rose mentioned it in this gathering, but like she was talking about when she first showed up to a small group, she felt uncomfortable and she, oh, I don't know if I wanna be here. And, and sometimes it's gonna feel like that, but if you, if you stick with it, you will, you will grow in relationships. I'll just also say this, not every small group is gonna be a perfect fit for you. And that's okay. I've had people come to our groups and I've been in groups where like we're all different. We have different passions and, and interests and, and like that's okay. If one small group isn't fulfilling this for you and th then just don't say, well, small groups don't work. Say, well, let me find another one or, or here's an idea. My guess is that you have a group of friends already, people that you connect with, and what would it look like if you just gathered some of those people together and said, hey, what if we just maybe like once a week or once every couple weeks, what if we get together, but when we get together, we just do it intentionally for the sake of like encouraging one another and studying the scriptures together and praying for one another and talking about how to grow in life with people that you are already friends with and then invite some more people to join you. That's called a small group. I want that for you. I want you to have friendships and, 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 and family. Here's the number, uh, number two. is A second thing that you can experience, a feature of this vehicle, people to grow with. There's something special that happens in this room and, and, and when, it, when a message is delivered and God is moving in this place, there's, there's a degree of growth that happens in here that, that really can't take place in a small group setting. There's just something special that God's designed that happens when the, the word of God is preached. But there's also something that can't happen in this room that happens in a smaller setting when, when you can be in close relationship with other people. And, and here's, here's the truth a point that I really want to invite you to consider, that in a smaller, more relational setting, you can be used to help speak words of life over somebody else and help them grow. I think that maybe unintentionally that the church at large has, has sadly maybe sent this message that because there's a stage like this and and a big gathering like this in the church that somehow we've sent the message that there's a few people that are called to do the ministry and they are the ones that hold microphones like this and then everybody else is just normal and supposed to consume. It's just not true. You're important. You're important. You, you have something to offer. You have something to pour into somebody else. Every one of you, if the spirit of the living God lives in you, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, you have something in you that can help somebody else grow that I'm not gonna relate to. Every single one of you has a place, not just to grow, but to help somebody else grow. And I'll even say this, I think, in fact, I've experienced that really you grow the most when you're helping somebody else grow. I remember when I first got into ministry, the day one, uh, my, my young life leader, he said, you think that you're getting into this thing so you can minister to other people, but what you don't know is that this whole thing is gonna minister to you. And, and that's the truth. I, I'm, I'm being dead honest with you. If I wasn't pouring out and in ministry, actively helping other people grow, I would be so much further from God. We were designed to not just consume, but to also pour out. Because you, you know what happens when all you do is consume? You die. <laughs> and so I just, I'm telling you this because I know that you want life and life abundant, and this is, this is how you get it, by being part of this thing. You were designed for that. Number three something you should, could, could expect from a small group, a place to wrestle with God's word. Again, there's something special about what happens here in a setting like this as the word of God is preached. And, you know, faith comes by hearing and you can only hear when somebody preaches. And so God designed it that way. But there's, there's also something so great and such a benefit when you're able to 
wrestle with how that word, how that scripture, how that sermon, how that situation in life, how society, how that's uh, working in you and your family and what you're wrestling with with your kids and, and, and a scripture. And like to get with people where you can voice what your opinion is and then wrestle that out with other spirit-filled believers is extremely important and needed. This is a monologue right now. And there's power in it, but you also need a setting where you can, you can get around God's word and, and, and talk about God's heart because not any one of us, no matter how great a theologian you are, not any one of us knows everything about the scripture or, or exactly God's heart, right? But when we get together and we wrestle it out with one another in the context of our community and our family, the situations going on in society, we take a, a scripture that's 2,000 years old, but we wrestle out what it looks like to apply it in 2021 when the world's going crazy. That happens in the midst of community, and it's a really, really healthy thing for you. I want that for you. I've experienced it in this vehicle, and I'd like to invite you to experience it. Number four, what you can expect from a small group is people to pray with. You might think this is like really simple and small, but it's really not. It's really huge. You know, when you're, when you're going through it in life, and you know that you have people that are really with you, that are like Rose said, warring with you in the spirit, there's, there's nothing that you can exchange for that. And you know, after like a sermon like this, oftentimes we'll have the prayer team come forward and, and, and some of you come forward for prayer and, and we see miracles happen and power happens in this moment. But just imagine it like this. This is, this is more like what a small group is like. On the weekend, you might come up to one person and pray with them once. But a small group would be like if I called the prayer team forward and I said, okay, um, most of you line up over here and I want 10 of you right here and those 10 are here just for you. So just any week you want to come up, sir, these 10 are just going to pray for you and you alone, okay? And everybody else, you can pray with these guys. But these 10, they'll be here for you every single week. That's what a small group is. That's what a small group is. It's your own personal prayer team that doesn't just pray for you once, but they actually pray for you throughout the week. And then when you come back next week, they ask you about how it's going. And I know you want that, right? And I want that for you. And that's something you can expect to experience in a healthy small group is people that are actually praying with you. Number five, last one. You can expect people who are pushing each other forward. What are the next steps? How do we apply that sermon? How do you apply what you learned? How, wh what's going on in your marriage? And maybe wh what's the next growth step that maybe you guys need? And like, th this is the goal that we're not just trying to create these little groups that gather together for, you know, a, a, a little powwow around the fire and roast some marshmallows and go on. No, no, we're trying to get people that will walk with each other, pray with each other, study the scriptures together and then say, how can we actually grow together? What's next? Because God has more and higher and deeper and better for us because there's a journey in this life towards following him and walking out what he's called us to. And we need oftentimes people around us to help us on that journey. You know, Jesus has already won freedom for us. We know that. But are we all experiencing the fullness of that right now? No, probably not, even though it's done. But we know the truth of the scripture is that even though it's done in the spirit, that there's a journey that we're on and what God has offered us is the vehicle of community to work this thing out and to grow together. And so again, on your journey towards finding freedom, I'm not saying that a small group at Heart of the City Church is the only way. There are many vehicles. What I'm saying to you, what I'm presenting to you today is that I believe in the culture that we're living in in 2021, I believe that this vehicle is one of the best vehicles that most people in this society can actually get in and, and become part of this journey. I'm gonna put it to you like this. Here's another vehicle. Here's another way towards discipleship and finding freedom. 
you could leave your job and your fishing nets behind and you could follow a rabbi around the Middle East for three years. That's a vehicle. That's one way to grow in your discipleship relationship with God. Jesus did it, so that is a vehicle. My guess is that most people in this room and in this society probably aren't able to quit everything, leave their family and their job and follow a rabbi around the Middle East for three years. And so what I'm, what I'm saying is, no, a small group is not the only vehicle, but I think it's a really, really good one. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm really doing quite well and I got something that's even better and shinier than your truck, I've got a Lambo. I would say if you have a better model for discipleship for this society, you need to tell us about it. (laughs) For real, like we want it. Just to be clear, we're not just trying to like build a program because we decided this is the program we want and we're gonna build this. If there's a better vehicle and you have it, please give it to us. Because, you know, when I sold cars up here, I was on commission, 100% commission. You don't sell a car, you don't eat. I just wanna tell you, I'm not on commission today. I'm not on commission. I, I'm not getting any, I have no other motivation here to sell you this vehicle other than I actually believe in it for you. And the good news is that today, it's at the low, low price of free 99. It is. And so I simply have to ask you, do you want the vehicle? Do you want the vehicle? Do you want relationship? Do you want prayer? Do you want some people to wrestle through the scriptures with? Do you want people that are pushing you towards your next steps? And in the groups at the heart, we say this, ESPN, encouragement, scripture, prayer, next steps. That's what we're trying to do. If you are not experiencing that, I wanna invite you to join one in just a few moments. I'm gonna have all of the current small group leaders go out into the lobby, and when I release you, you're gonna have an opportunity to go and meet some of them. If you sign up today on a clipboard, it doesn't mean you're locked in. It just means that they're gonna invite you and get you more information, and I encourage you, try one or two or three, and don't feel like you're locked in, but maybe you'll find one that's a good fit for you. That's what this weekend is all about, Groups of the Heart launch weekend, that that you guys would find a place. Now, this is also what I know. If every one of you responded to this, there wouldn't be enough room in the small groups that we currently have going. Now, what I believe is that many of you in this room are supposed to start your own. I think if you give me a chance, I can convince you it's not as hard as you think it is. It's not as unattainable as a Lambo might be. It's really attainable and it's really functional and it's really practical in your life and you can do it. You have something to offer. You have a group of friends that you already like. Maybe you just gather them together and I'd love to walk with you on the journey of considering what leadership might look like for you. And so the invitation today is to number one, consider, do I actually want that? And number two, if you do, that you consider joining one or consider starting one. Sound good?